Good morning, it's Tyler here at Chessie Champs, checking team number 7034 to be determined. A huge breakout year uh, from this team, by the way, with a couple uh, district wins. Just look absolutely phenomenal up in the PNW area. And very excited to talk about uh, this gorgeous looking machine. Take a look all the way through as you go through. Great aesthetic design, but a great functional design as well, too. So can't wait to talk more about that. By the way, help me speak more about this. I have Maddie, Thomas, and Sam. And two to be determined, definitely a team you got to keep your eye out for in future years. But this year, great robot. Let's talk more about it coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Apply the skills you gain as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Let's start out on your uh, intake, Maddie. Talk to me about what's gone into uh, your intake. How did you come up with this design and any major iterations or changes throughout the season? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think a main thing for this season is we were very focused on trying to keep everything as simple as possible. We've had a tendency to overcomplicate things in the past. Uh, so we've decided to tr like troubleshoot a few different kinds of, uh, of intakes. Uh, we found really soon on that the green in, uh, wheels up in front here did a really good job at sucking the balls in. Um, then we did also figured out to integrate things that we needed um, to be able to center the balls best as possible to really contain things. In the past, we've had um, indexers that don't do that, so we needed to focus on that. Uh, we found that these mechanic wheels worked really well. They were actually used um, on FTC robots in the past, and that's how we had them in our lab. Um, so yeah, the ball, I guess we can show it off now. That first set of wheels really grabs it in, and the second one just brings it towards the middle. Um, at first, we didn't have that bigger four inch green wheel in the center, but we found that that helped really bring it in. We were having it get, getting stuck and just kind of rolling in place. We also added um, like a little bit of padding there that helps as well. I noticed uh, when the second cargo piece came in, your intake came up automatically. Is that like yes. a sensor that triggers that? Yeah, so we have two sensors in our indexer, one of which is up on the side here. You can see the first ball and the other ones on the other side, yellow as well. Um, so when both of those sensors are tripped, our intake also goes up, which is really helpful while driving because um, it allows us not to have three balls in at pretty much any time. Well, let's keep moving on then. Uh, Thomas, uh, speaking about uh, indexer areas, talk more about what's gone into uh, your indexer on there. Uh, you guys have such a smooth transition as it goes through, so love to hear about that. And of course, we'll talk about your shooter as well. So the indexer, two things kind of took over on the indexer design. One was that the climb you'll see in the middle of the robot takes up a lot of space in real estate. It's not on the sides like many other robots. And the other thing was that in past years, we had a lot of issues with the um, gunner having to press like a ton of buttons to make all the balls through the robot smoothly. So we wanted that to be completely automated. So you notice it has this L-shaped design and that's to allow space for the climb. And that actually gave us two different sections to work with for the two different balls. And, uh, the sensors Matty talked about, those completely automate it. They're the photoelectric sensors, and it's just when the top one's tripped, it stops the top belt of the indexer. You can see there's two belts of the indexer. There's this vertical belt, and there's this horizontal belt down here. And so each one's basically off when its sensor's tripped, and also the intake comes up when the bottom one is tripped. And the actual design of the belts and stuff on the indexer didn't go through too much iteration. Um, it's just a relatively tight timing belt with some compliant wheels for each stage. I gotta talk about your shooter. You guys might have one of the uh, largest flywheels I've seen on a uh, team this year on here. Uh, but it looks like you know a lot of heavy weight on the outside, uh, less weight on the inside. Talk to me more about what's gone into this and of course your whole shooter assembly then too. Yeah, so our shooter went through a ton of iteration on our laser cutter. I don't know if this is like the fifth or the sixth. Sure. So we found that the very wide flywheel I mean, we just kept adding flywheels and it got more and more consistent. So we figured just like six inches of flywheel, why not? And for the inertia flywheels, um, we also found that the inertia helped and it made the shots more consistent. 
because consistency was super big for the shooter for us. And this black flywheel, we found that bounce out would be a really big problem without it. So we added this and the distance between these two we played with a lot, but eventually we came to one that we found worked. And um, there's actually nothing adjustable about the relative speeds of the flywheels or the angle, because we, we found that um, the farther back we went, it still hit, the balls would just go really high. Where do you guys like to shoot from for a 2B turn? What's kind of like your sweet spot in the field? We like to go from the tape of the tarmac to just past the launch pad. Sure. And when you guys are looking at it throughout the season, has, has that changed at all from where you're shooting from, or is your strategy always to shoot from those areas? We originally wanted to do the fender shot, actually, because sure. we thought the consistency of just driving up there would be really good. But as we prototyped the shooter, we found that we could actually shoot accurately from a farther distance and decided to be more ambitious. And it worked out at our first competition because we were one of the fewer teams who could do that. Let's start to wrap up on this robot, Sam. Let's talk about your climber uh, that you have. Uh, it's looked great on the field so far, so I can't wait to see more about it. Talk to me what's gone into it, and then if we can demonstrate uh, how your climber process works, too, it would be great. Yeah, of course. So our climber is based on the LEGO Climb uh, V1, so that we have a constant spring force um, at that arm. You have to enable the robot. Um, that will telescope up and grab onto the mid bar, pull, that, pull down, and then on its way back down, the bar will um, hit these spring hooks and lock on, and that will allow us to climb up to the next level. Um, right here, we actuate the arm in and out with two pneumatic cylinders. Um, this was actually an iteration we did because we noticed that one um, pneumatic cylinder doesn't have enough force to keep the bar steady and um, it was causing a lot of swing in our climb and that was taking a lot of time and preventing us from climbing faster. Um, by adding two, we made it a lot more violent and a lot more fast. Um, so we can get up to the traverse in about seven seconds from inside the hangar. Is that an entirely manual process? Yeah, that you guys so it's an entirely manual process. So we've heard a lot of teams talk about like automating yeah. their- well, Seven um, seconds manual is pretty impressive. Yeah, so what we did instead of spending the time of automating it, we spent a lot of time training our operator, which is me, um, to climb up really fast, um, just by learning like how the robot swings. And this also gives us the advantage if something goes wrong, we don't have to ease up our robot like I've seen other teams do. Um, and it's a lot more adjustable and you kind of like, you can work on the fly. Well, two to be determined, uh, definitely a team to keep your eye out for in future seasons as well. Congratulations on a great season uh, this year during Rapid Rack. Good luck at Chessie Champs, and we can't see what you all come up with in future years as well. Thanks a lot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.